Hello and good morning. So I am a genie. I'm one of the midwives here at Generations and I'm here with Jamie, who's a public health nurse at our local public health department. And uh, Jamie is here today um, under um, <laughs> great <laughs> protest, um, but willing to talk on uh, live camera uh, on Facebook about Healthy Babies, Healthy Children, which is a public health program that has been in place in Ontario since uh, sometime in the 90s. And we are huge, huge fans of uh, the Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program because it uh, very clearly is a high quality program that is um, of great value to Ontario families and really really fills a very significant gap in supporting the transition to parenthood and, um, and in assisting families uh, to have healthy, happy family lives. So um, the plan today is that Jamie's going to talk about the program, uh, what Healthy Babies, Healthy Children offers, and, uh, and then I might chime in with a couple of questions. So over to you, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so Healthy Babies, Healthy Children is a provincial program that's free um, and it's a voluntary program. So families can become involved with us anywhere from um, prenatally right up until kids transition to school. Um, the program really looks different for everybody. It's, uh, it's truly meant to meet your needs. It's an evidence-based program. Um, some families um, want to work on um, play activities or child proofing, nutrition, growth and development, attachment. We have great maternal mental health activities. Uh, it's just a great support for um, whatever your needs are to help you, um, you know, have a, a strong, happy, healthy, uh, well-developed child and have that good attachment um, between you and your children. So for families who have the greatest number of needs, what would the program look like for, for that family? Um, so families can have visits um, up to every week. Um, so they might, uh, family may want visits weekly. Um, they'll have a public health nurse who does more of the coordination. So maybe other services involved, which can become overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, they'd have a public, they'd have a family home visitor um, who would also visit, do more of the hands-on activities. Sorry, can I just back up and ask you a question? Oh, so yeah. um, when you're talking about coordination, what kinds of um, additional services might families have? Involved. Okay, so some families may have, um, you know, speech and language or developmental services or infant development. When there's, you know, that num when there's a number of services involved, it can be overwhelming. We want to make sure we're not um, duplicating service. So um, somebody within that group of people, um, it could be healthy babies, will decide to, if the family's interested, let's all get together and plan out care um, and plan out services um, just to meet the family's needs and not be overwhelming. Sorry, and then you were talking about the home visiting program when I interrupted you. So the home visiting program, yeah, so for families, some families will have a public health nurse and a family home visitor, um, kind of depending on need and, and want. Um, so the public health nurse is, um, you know, doing maybe more of the education, more of the assessment, um, the um, that service coordination, and then the home visitor is doing hands-on activities. So it could be, you know, making your own baby food or helping a child prove. Um, some people want to get out to a group, but they're a little nervous to get out there the first time um, so the home visitor will go the first few times to get a family comfortable within that setting um, it's really it looks different for every family because every family has different needs mm -hmm. And can healthy babies, healthy children help with things like food security? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, we do the best we can within the communities um, we work. Uh, so for somebody prenatally, we really try to connect with the Good Food for Healthy Baby group, um, where families are eligible to get a voucher every week for a grocery store. They get free prenatal vitamins. Um, we have, you know, we help support families in accessing the food bank or other um, food um, supports, so for example, the Salvation Army. If clients are, you know, apprehensive about going the first time. Mm -hmm. We will, um, we'll go with the family. Um, if it's an emergency situation, then we're going to reach out to some of our community partners and see what kind of um, support we can get around food. And um, good food for healthy babies is that also a provincially available program, or is that more community specific? Yeah. So that's the. Um, this, Canadian Prenatal Nutrition Program, um, and it really depends on the community. So for us in Leeds Rumble Lanark, um, it's run by um, Connections, which is an agency at a Carleton place, and we partner with with Connections. Um, so for 
our area that um, Genius serves, there's group in um, Brockville. For people who can't access the Brockville group, uh, maybe they live in Prescott or Cardinal, they don't have transportation, then we'll service them on an outreach basis through a, a partnership we have with the Good Food Group so that families um, can still access, you know, some of that, that voucher support prenatally and the free prenatal vitamins. Okay. So for families that are, um, for families that don't have issues with food security mm -hmm. and don't require um, as much hands-on assistance in their home or care coordination who mm -hmm. have an uncomplicated birth and an uncomplicated family right. and are um, economically privileged and those kinds of, you know, um, advantages in uh, becoming a parent or expanding your family, what kind of services are, are helpful for um, those families from Healthy Babies, Healthy Children? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so Healthy Babies really is looking at, um, you know, working with families at whatever their need may be. So for some families, um, like in Ontario, uh, everyone that delivers a baby is offered contact from public health and that contact can look different. So for some people um, may decide like, yeah, I only need, um, like a phone call would be nice from a public health nurse. Um, if it's a family that genius serving, then we're not going to do the same assessment because you're getting the support around um, feeding, etc., from from your midwife. Um, but we'll have that quick call just around um, community supports, um, so that when you're ready to get out, um, you know, connect with other moms, kind of, um, or dad, connect with other dads, other families, kind of get that feeling of like, oh, okay, wait, wait, what I'm going through is completely normal. We want to share that community information with you, so it might be just sharing. For our communities like the baby talk group or um, the nature walk available throughout Leeds Ramble Landmark so multiple locations it's all on um, the health unit website um, there's it's the earlier center or early on now I guess they're called is um, kind of the main provider they um, and then a public health nurse goes weekly so there's usually a a circle time where everyone will, if they're comfortable, will share what's going on um, that week with their baby. Um, there's usually a, a, a topic. So I was there recently as a guest speaker and did a maternal mental health activity. Mm -hmm. um, but they have a variety of, of guest speakers. Um, they might have like a dietitian come in or have somebody come in and talk about infant development, kind of whatever's of interest to the group at the time. Um, the earlier center, um, you really need to check out the earlier center or early on. They have amazing programs, um, things here that, um, for families that Jeannie and I would work with in, um, in Brockville area, like, you know, baby rhyme time, baby sign language, nature walks, just, um, great programming for families with children, um, you know, zero to six. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of triple P sessions. Um, What's like, triple P? Triple P's positive parenting program. Um, so they're a great partner for that, along with other agencies. Um, sometimes, you know, families are feeling like, okay, I'm not having any problems with parenting right now. Is triple P is not something I need to reach out to, but triple P is truly for all families. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a great, um, great opportunity to get out and learn just how to raise um, confident, confident children. Yeah. Which is their tagline, right? Yeah. 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 There's yeah. another word in there, but yeah, yeah. I forget it right now. Um, we, uh, we accessed triple P when my oldest son was a toddler because we were having one of those. I, I have no idea here. Like yeah. I do not yeah. know what to do. Yeah. This is yeah. not tenable. So yeah. This is like, cannot keep yeah. going, but I yeah. have no idea what to do. So, yeah. um, and, uh, yeah. So anyway, that, that program has multiple levels of access as yeah. well, right? Depending yeah. on what you're looking for. So if you're just kind of wondering about sleep or like yeah. how to deal with temper tantrums or, yeah. you know, and it adjusts also different age groups, yes. right? Yeah. And you're from infancy to uh, teen years. Yeah. 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 I access yeah. triple P. I need, yeah. I need triple P on a daily basis right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how old are your kids? Two and four. Two and four. Yeah. yeah. Everybody needs triple P. Yeah, everybody, Two and four. Yeah, everybody yeah. needs triple P. Right. Okay. And so um, one of the things that you haven't talked a lot about so far is the breastfeeding supports that are available right. via the public health unit. Yeah. So we um, we have breastfeeding clinics throughout Leeds, Rimple, Lanark. Um, the date, times, locations are on our um, on our website, or you can call in to the health unit and, and find out that info. Um, you can drop into the clinic, or you can call and make an appointment. Um, our staff are exceptionally well, are trained very well um, mm -hmm. in breastfeeding support. Uh, we certainly encourage clients to get out to um, a clinic, but if you're someone who can't make it into a clinic, um, then we'll make arrangements for someone to see you. 
great. Um, and I was really interested in what you were telling uh, me and the other midwives this morning about how often you're getting calls from people later who had previously declined the program. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse, me, excuse me. So I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit sure. about the general population around when you're when you're um, receiving those calls and about what issues and then also for midwifery clients who have previously thought, well, I don't need healthy babies, healthy children. I have my midwife. My midwife is going to help. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So at, at times families will say after birth, oh, no, I don't need a call from public health right now. I, I, I have a midwife and um, that's kind of the, the decision they've made at that time. But, you know, later on we're getting calls and it's usually around, um, you know, service with the midwife has ended and they're really looking to increase that support network, get out to community programs. Um, so as families we talked to at the time, of, you know, shortly after discharge, we're sharing that info, we're getting the, the details to you so you have it when you're ready to get out. Um, families are calling after they've finished service with the midwife around breastfeeding um, and um, we're getting calls, whether, and that's true for clients that consented to service in the beginning or didn't, um, but we're getting um, calls around um, maternal mental health um, and uh, kind of what moms are experiencing or partners are experiencing and um, support that they need at that time. Great. So we've got a couple of comments here oh, from good. from people. Maybe you can read some of those uh, the very positive comments here about how this program helped. Okay. All right. Okay. The nurse from this program, and again, not what helped me get set up with a loaned breast pump when Izzy had a latch issue to start. Oh, we should talk about pumps for sure. While we worked together to improve our latch, I was still able to keep a great supply because of this. Um, good point. Um, the health unit does loan um, hospital grade double electric breast pumps um, when there's, um, you know, when there's a, a, a reason, um, you know, to help protect that breastfeeding relationship. So it could be um, that um, mom and baby are separated, or in this case, there had been some um, like some concerns with latch, so to protect that supply. So we do loan the pump. Um, at, if there's some um, families are able, we would um, charge just for the collection kits, um, which are anywhere between 10 and $20. And the loan of the pump is free um, for women who are working on kind of getting baby back back to breast right good point thank you so um somebody else comments my health nurse phone call came at the perfect time after our first night home and a very cranky babe <laughs> she informed me that my milk was probably a day late due to surgery and he was probably just looking for that milk it came in that night and sure enough he was a completely different baby i'm so thankful for that simple phone call yeah. amazing program yeah. oh that's so nice yeah. to hear it's so it's so true. Sometimes the, um, you know, we'll talk about this in the office. We'll, we'll talk to a mom or, or see a mom. And it's just this simple, um, short little tip that's really just, uh, yeah. that's made the difference. Yeah. And just knowing that there's somebody out there that you can call as well, exactly. right? When you're, you're just not sure. Yeah. Um, so a question here for you. Does the early education center do the baby sign language or should I be talking to my nurse about this? So I know the early on, so they used to be called the anterior earlier center, early on, they're referred to now, um, used to run a baby, an, a baby sign language course, teaching, you know, like more, all done, etc. cetera. Um, I don't, I'd have to look at their calendar to know what they're offering it right now. I have a feeling that it's not ongoing right now. Um, but if you had, um, you know, if you're on, if you're part of the home visiting program, you have a public health nurse and a family home visitor, definitely talk to them. Um, we might have resources we can bring out. Um, we can take that feedback back to the early on center um, and say, you know, we have lots of clients looking for a baby sign language course to run Great. around. So they're somewhat responsive to requests from the community about oh, yeah. around their program. Yeah, the early on center really wants to meet um, the community need for sure. Great. Yeah. Great. And um, then another comment um, from Crystal and the early on play and learn has really helped Izzy socialize and learn mm -hmm. around other children and had great support uh, from the people who work there as well as other parents when you have other questions or concerns or just reassuring words that you're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hugely um, important. And we weren't planning on talking about this, Jamie, and I don't think we should get into it too deeply, but I just, that comment just really brings to mind the importance of having community support mm -hmm. in affecting um, women's mental health in yeah. the first year yeah. uh, postpartum, not just the first year postpartum, but 
yes. for sure in that first year of postpartum yeah. Yeah. and the role that isolation plays in increasing the risk of postpartum mood disorders. Um, so, uh, you know, for me personally, I, I hated going to baby gatherings. Right. I found that super awkward. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a lot going on. I didn't want to share. I didn't want to say right. nursery rhymes. I, you know, that was yeah. like not, I didn't want to do that. Um, but, uh, also it getting out and getting together with other families. I know, even though I didn't want to do it, it was hugely helpful in managing, um, the stressors of what was going on for us at the time. So, um, Sorry about the binging and the bonging here. We've got midwifery texts well, coming I think, through. Um, kind of what I think it's, is it Crystal is talking yeah. about and what you're talking about is, you know, that's why, um, you know, we've had such a great partnership is that the midwives are encouraging families to take that phone call from public health or that contact, you know, or that contact from public health so we can get those community supports out there so that you know when you're ready um, where you can go to be around people going through something similar. Yeah. So, um, so one of the things that I think is, uh, an important takeaway is that even if you think you don't need this program, you might find yourself benefiting from it sometime down the road. Yeah. And one of the things that I always tell clients is that this is an opt-in program from um, uh, from an organization that is really responsive. And so it's not like when you sign up for an email list to get a coupon and then you get a hundred emails in your <laughs> inbox. Yeah. Like yeah. public health is not going to be making your life less convenient because they're over contacting or over sharing right. or um you know trying to to offer you services you don't want mm -hmm. um and from my perspective um i've yet to um i've yet to find a reason not to opt in um and i have had i didn't we, sorry i didn't tell you i was thinking about this earlier because i hadn't thought about it but i the only objection that i've heard about that is a um, kind of a serious objection, although not valid in my experience, is if I'm involved in healthy ba babies, healthy children, and I have concerns about CAS involvement, right. that there's another level of oversight and I need to avoid okay. that. Right. I'm wondering if you can speak to that sure. valid yeah. concern or fair oh, concern, yeah. even though it, oh, in my experience, doesn't actually play out that way yeah. for people. I think, you know, we hear that fear too. And, um, it, we have this, you know, we have a duty to report, um, you know, abuse or neglect concerns, absolutely. Um, just as all other professionals have a duty to report. Um, we're truly though a service to support families so that, um, you know, they're confident in their, their parenting so that they have the best information to make decisions. It's really, uh, it's not something we run into um, often um, just like all professionals, we have a duty to report, but um, we're working with families so that um, they have good information, they can make good decisions. Um, I, I hear that concern and, um, I, you know, it's probably there's a lot of historical mm -hmm. back info to that, um, but we're here to support families for you to reach your goals. Yeah. When you, when you say there's a lot of like history around that is that because historically there there has been legitimate concern that that has oh, been yeah. an increased lead like I just want to be totally transparent yeah. for people who might have those concerns. Yeah. No, I'm thinking more the families that are talking to me about something similar or um, you know they're thinking historically what you know what kind of reputation does family children services have that doesn't necessarily match how they are now but right. okay um, kind of those feelings from the past and how things were handled etc. Um, or um, that's not how we, um, it's not how we run our program. We're truly there to work with the family to meet their goals. Um, it's, um, our only obligation, like I said, is when there's a duty to report, which people would want, if there's a duty to report abuse and neglect, then absolutely we have to make that call. But, um, you know, how often does that really come up? Mm -hmm. um, right. Right. Families that are voluntarily working with us, they've really taken this step forward to say, you know what, yeah, there is some information I want. Yeah, I do want to work on this. Like, mm -hmm. right there is a really positive step, a positive thing to see. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really working with families on, you know, a strength-based approach. Um, so I think once families meet us, see what the program's about, that relationship is developed, those fears go. Because yeah. I see that's not what it's about. Yeah. And just to be, again, perfectly transparent, there is actually no relationship between no formal relationship between healthy babies, healthy children and family and children's services or CAS. No, no, no more than the, what is legally there for 
every single professional. Right. Right. There's no special relationship in place. No, we're not. It's, healthy Babies, Healthy Children is not a program of family and children's services. No, no. Totally independent and totally distinct. Independent. Yep. Healthy Babies, right. Healthy Children is, um, we're at the health unit. We're at public health. Um, it's a provincial program completely separate from family and children's mm -hmm. services. Yeah. Great. So are there any other um, aspects of the program that you think are important for people to know about or any other community programs that you interface with that we haven't mentioned so far? Oh, I'm sure there's a ton. <laughs> the the two-year-old and four-year-old really have my brain, right? <laughs> like, Got um, it. yeah, we're working with, it depends on the family. Right? It's like I talked to somebody at the YMCA other, the other day so that we could work on getting subsidized memberships, or financial right. support for our families and to make that process um, simple or, you know, working with food banks so that we have, we can, you know, um, reach out to a food bank when a family's in additional need. Uh, we work with the early on center, uh, speech and language, infant development, um, good food group. I don't know. I, I feel like we just need to get a list of community partners. It really just depends on the family, what the family wants to work on, what the family feels their needs are, um, and we'll make the connections based on that. So we have a dietitian in our pro link to, to the Healthy Babies program. So um, there's times where we connect with um, our health unit dietitian, connect them with the family, um, or bring the information directly from the Great. So I know that um, every Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program is a little bit different across the province because it's responding to the community needs, its specific community needs. But right. is it fair to say in general that if you are having a baby in Ontario, that um, having that conversation, receiving that phone call from or visit from that uh, public health nurse is um, like a single access point for support? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah services and organizations within the community. Yeah. So you can not worry about trying to figure all of that out and just accept that referral to Healthy Babies, Healthy Children and have that initial conversation. Yeah, I see. Because we're working with, you know, so many families, so many agencies, I do see it as a great opportunity, a nice contact point for you to, um, for families to say like, okay, this is kind of what's going on and we'll, we'll know whether we're the right program or we'll know who to connect a family right. with. Some within, um, like, like you said, it's across Ontario and every health unit, you know, does things a little different. Um, so some health units, um, you know, depending on um, what's going on with that family, it might just be um, a letter that gets sent out. It might not even be a phone call for okay. us. For us, we are trying to call everybody um, just because we've had such a positive response to that. Um, but it could look different across Ontario. Okay. For sure. But there's some contact that there's some contact reach yeah. out from the yep. public health unit. Yep. Okay. So for all of the services uh, and supports that Jamie has mentioned, um, I will provide um, links or contact information for each of those. Some of those will be specific to our community. Some of those will likely be a, a province-wide initiative. And so the contact information will be province-wide as well. And I will publish um, all of that information in a blog post that you can find at uh, generationsmidwifery.ca forward slash HBHC for Healthy Babies, Healthy Children. Thank you very much and feel free to add comments or questions uh, under this video and we will absolutely respond and get back to you uh, if you are seeking access to the program or any of the programs that Jamie mentioned. Any final words? Um, no, I hope that um, at some point you have contact with public health and that uh, it meets your needs. Great, thanks very much. Thanks.